welcome to this month's episode of Money Mountaineering with actuary Peter Newirth, who asked the question, what's your future worth? Today's guest, or this month's guest, is David Scharf. He is president-elect of the Conference of Consulting Actuaries. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you. Yes, we are so happy to have you here. So before I turn it over to Pete, I want to tell our audience a little bit about you. Your day job is as a principal and actuary based at Bucks in Secaucus, New Mexico at that office. You're a leader in innovation, executive benefits and mergers and acquisitions. You have more than 30 years of experience working with clients in their employee benefits programs. So you also are a big deal at the CCA and we are gonna have that conversation with Pete. So take it away, Peter Newberg. You know, the members of the audience probably at this point know what an actuary is, but they people might not know the difference between the various actuarial organizations. And so, uh, David, you are the president of the Conference of Consulting Actuaries. So can you talk a little bit about who they are and what role they play within the, within the profession? Sure, I'm happy to. And firstly, let me say thank you for having me on your program, Pete, and hope for the wonderful introduction. I will say that I wish I was in New Mexico, but I'm actually in New Jersey, um, but, but New Jersey is nice too. Firstly, the Conference of Consulting Actuaries, which is what I'm president-elect, um, so I'll ter- I will be the president shortly. I'm still waiting. Um, I just have to survive until, until the, the transfer of power to me. Um, so when, I, when, I, when I'm um, the president of the Conference of Consulting Actuaries runs this organization that has many members, all the members are actuaries, but the key distinction is that we're consulting actuaries. But when I say that, I mean that in the broadest sense of the term. So it's not simply a traditional consultant. We have members who serve in different practice areas and for different types of employers, um, whether they're insurance companies, whether they're for corporations, whether they're for consulting actuarial firms, Um, because because the common element is that we all are um, sharing knowledge and guidance um, to whoever the stakeholders are. They could be clients. They could be internal um, colleagues of ours. So the the key element is how to present actuarial um, knowledge, which can be complex in a way that's clear and simple. Well, maybe not simple, but in a way that's easily understandable to those who don't have that knowledge base. Right. And so it sounds like there's, there's different flavors of actuaries within the conference of consulting actuaries. And, and of course, you know, I've, you and I have uh, presented a number of conference of CCA meetings, um, but always on pension and retirement issues. But it sounds like there are also uh, health actuaries and life insurance actuaries. And I mean, what is the what are the range of actuary type of actuaries that are within the conference of consulting actuaries? Yeah, so it is a wide range. Um, I would say that we do have a large number of pension retirement actuaries and health actuaries, but we're starting to grow um, into other areas as well. So there's a lot of skills um, that the Conference of Consulting Actuaries offers through our different programs um, where they're of value to whether you're a life insurance actuary or a property and casualty actuary. Um, Even on the health side, there's a lot of different types of health actuaries. Um, I'll give an example. We did recently a, a, a webinar on COVID, um, where I moderated that webinar, and we had, a, but it's an epistemologist, the doctors who study um, diseases, medical diseases, and, and an actuary, a health actuary, along with a retirement actuary. So we had a, a whole set of different uh, panelists to cover the diverse range of things that actuaries can cover. And something like COVID, and this was something getting into the mortality and the severity, the medical um, severity of COVID, um, and how and how that affects medical claims, and but as well as mortality. So it covers a number of areas. So I bring that up as an example of of a problem in the world, or some or something that's affecting all of us, and that actuaries have this unique skill um, to hit it from a num- number of different areas and to look at it in a very holistic way, where we're not just looking at it very um, one dimensionally. Well, it sounds like it's not just holistic, but also uh, there's a lot of cross fertilization. I mean, it, it it seems like one of the one of the strengths, and I've always experienced is one of the strengths of the conference 
is that there are different actuaries that practice in different areas. So for example, when the retiree medical uh, 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 liabilities had to be put on the books, there became a lot of uh, cross-fertilization between the health actuaries who knew about medical claims and the retirement actuaries who, who did pensions. So uh, are you finding that there's a lot of good cross-fertilization between the different practice areas within the actuarial profession? Yes, we're definitely not in boxes um, or, or we're, we're definitely um, out and sharing information. I think that's also another um, valuable feature of the conference is the networking. And when we when we go to ev events, in-person events, which we have again now, thankfully, um, you don't necessarily know at first if you're talking to a health actuary or a life actuary or a pension actuary. And there's a and just sharing those ideas. There's a lot of skills that in one practice area you might develop and get expertise in that's readily applicable to another area, and that's a tremendous area of opportunity. Um, just sharing those ideas between actuaries of different backgrounds. Um, but uh, you've also mentioned these uh, communities and um, and in particular, the you mentioned the community of the defined contribution community. Do, do you get involved in the in the decumulation problem because that that's a as you know, that's an area of of great great import impact for me, which is yeah, how is someone going to live on their? Defined contribution account for the rest of the rest of their life, and and uh, is that something that this community is uh, is looking at? Yes, absolutely, and, and it's something that even in my in my day job, that's something that I'm focused on in on as well, um, because this is this is this is a big issue today, and we used to, it, it typically as depending on your background, you might know that there's that typically the American employee retired with a defined benefit pension. So it was a guaranteed pension, got a monthly payment, did not have to worry about any of, of this. Of, you know, yes, you might've had some savings to supplement that, but you were secure. You had a solid retirement uh, savings through your employer and didn't have to worry about, about, and it would last for life. So it was terrific. Now with the, with the decline in defined benefit programs, more 401k type plans, um, and other savings that people have, people jumping from job to job, so their their money might not be with one employer. They might have, they might be self-employed. Um, so they've saved a num, you know, some money. So there's firstly an accumulation problem. Did they accumulate the right amount? Which is one problem. But even if you have, how do you then use that or you know gauge that to to be enough money to provide for the rest of your life? not knowing how long you will live, perhaps. Tell, tell the audience why you think, I mean, I, I've told them many times in many different ways, but I'd like to hear your perspective on why is the actuarial perspective so important right now in these times to uh, help us through? Yeah, and, and I think there's a number of things that have happened recently that make it all the more dramatically so. I think that actuaries were always important. So going back 50 years ago, I think this would have been true as well, but I think it's just been magnified and even more so today. A, a, couple, of, a couple of areas, look at COVID. COVID's an area where actuaries had a lot to offer. And I think some did. And I'm looking at one right now because I know that Pete, you actually wrote an article on COVID that was very enlightening and had some really good analysis um, in there. So I think both on the medical side, on the mortality side, and on how it affects investments or retirement security. Another example right. is in the defined contribution world, as people are, I think we're going to have some type of crisis, or maybe some say we are having crisis. I know it's under debate. Some people say things are fine, as is. Um, but in any case, it's being talked about, about you know, how people are going to be able to retire um, for, because of a lack of savings. Um, so there's a lot of different areas that we're touching on, all of which will play key contributions to the future of our world, really. Yes, yes. Well, and, and, and I'll tell you, amen, is what, was what I would say to that. <laughs> amen. This has been great. Thank you so much for being on my show. And um, Hope, I guess I'll turn it back to you to, to close us out. Thank you. How fascinating. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so audience, thank you so much for being with us. This is this 
January 2023 episode of Money Mountaineering with actuary and author Peter Newworth. Asking the question, what's your future worth? We are with David Scharf. The will you be by January? You'll be president, right, of CCA? Um, it's actually a, it's a weird transition period. It's, a, it's in October. Okay, I have a long way to get ready for this. <laughs> Take that back. So the president elect of the CCA. Thank you, David. Thank you, Pete, and thank you for all of our audience sharing tonight with us. We look forward to talking to you soon. Happy 2023.